This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In this section, I'm going to talk about how basic I.O. is performed in C++. At this point, I'd like to talk about how basic I.O., in other words, input-output, is accomplished with the standard library in C++. If you're using the standard library to do I.O., then most likely you're going to want to include the I.O. stream header file. This particular header file has a lot of important declarations and definitions that relate to uh, I.O. functionality. There's a user-defined type called iStream, which stands for input stream. This is a stream from which characters or data can be read. There's another user-defined type called OStream, which is, stands for output stream. It's a stream to which characters or data can be written. And there are three interesting uh, streams that are set up for you automatically by the standard library. One is called CIN, one is called COUT, and one is called CERR. CIN is what's called the standard input stream. It's the place that normally your program would read input from. COUT is, is the standard output stream. This is the place where your program would normally send output to. And then CERR is the standard error stream. This is typically where error messages would be sent. If something goes wrong with your program, this is the place where error messages would be written to. In most operating system environments, uh, the above three streams typically tend to refer to the user's terminal or console by default, although usually this can be overridden so that they come, come from or go to files or network connections or other such uh, sources and sinks for data. The uh, less than, less than operator is used for doing output. It's what's called a stream inserter. It can be used to write data to an output stream. The greater than, greater than operator is used for input. It's what we call a stream extractor. It's used to extract data or take data out of an input stream. And then the stream objects, in other words, objects of type iStream and OStream, they can be used in contexts where a Boolean expression is expected. In these contexts, the, the expression will evaluate to true if the stream has not encountered any errors. In other words, everything is okay and there hasn't been any I.O. error, for example. And it will evaluate to false otherwise. So this gives you a very convenient way to check to see if any I.O. errors have occurred or other problems when you're reading and writing data. On this slide, we have an example illustrating very basic usage of I.O. streams in the standard library. Basically what this program does is it prompts the user to enter an integer by writing a message to standard output. Then it reads from standard input the integer that was entered and then either prints the message to standard output saying what integer was read if an integer was in fact successfully read from standard input. Otherwise it prints a message to standard error saying that there was a problem. So if you look at the program in more detail, the first thing we do is we include the IO stream header file because this header file has the, all the key definitions for IO streams. Then the first thing we do inside our main function is we, we use the output operator, which is the less than, less than operator, which is sometimes referred to as a stream inserter because it inserts data into a stream. In other words, it writes to a stream. And the data that we're going to write to the stream is this particular string here. So this will write the message, enter an integer colon space to the uh, standard output output stream. Then we declare a variable or define or declare a variable x of type int and then we're going to read into this integer variable from standard input, the standard input stream cn. And we're using this operator here, which is essentially an input operator. It's sometimes referred to as a stream extractor because it extracts data from a stream. In this case, it's going to extract an int value from the stream. Then after we've done this, we're careful to make sure that there was no IO errors when we were reading from the stream. So we check, or we use the uh, cn variable in a context where a Boolean expression is expected. This will result in this expression being converted to a bool, which is true if no I.O. errors or other problems occurred on the stream so far, CN, and it will return false otherwise. In other words, if some problem had occurred on the input stream, CN, then this would return false. So if we go inside the if, this means that we were successfully able to read the integer value into X, and then at this point we just write a message to standard output saying the integer entered was, and then we write the value X, followed by a period, followed by a new line character. In the case that this condition wasn't true, this means that an error must have occurred on the input stream CN, in which case we write a message to C error, the standard error output stream, saying end of file was reached or there was an IO error. So just a very simple example of using IO streams. 
When using I.O. stream, sometimes we may want additional control over how input and output are performed. And I.O. manipulators are a mechanism for allowing us to get this additional control. So with I.O. manipulators, we can provide a way to control formatting of data values written to output streams. And also we control, can control the uh, parsing of data values that are read from input streams. The declarations related to manipulators can be found in the header files I.O.S., I.O. manip, I.Stream, and O.Stream. And most manipulators are used to control output formatting, and that's what I'm going to focus on here. Uh, there's a few categories of manipulators in the sense of how they behave when they're applied to streams. Some manipulators have an immediate effect. In other words, the instant that you apply the manipulator to a stream, something happens. An example of this would be endl. This particular manipulator, when it's written to an output stream, it causes a new line character to be written and the, the output stream to be flushed. Some IO manipulators, they only affect the next data value that's output, and an example of this is set w. This is used to set the field width for data that's being output. Um, this only applies to the very next item that's output. And then some manipulators are sticky in the sense that once you apply them to a stream, they remain in effect until you change them again. So they apply to all subsequent data values that are output, for example. An example of this would be set precision, which is used to control how many decimal places are printed in a number. On this slide, I have a list of I.O. manipulators that can be used to control how output is generated. So I'll walk through each of these manipulators uh, briefly. So the first is set W. This is used to set the field width. When you output data, it's printed in a certain width field, which you can control. And this is the, the uh, manipulator that allows you to set the width of the field. Uh, set fill sets the fill character. What the fill character is, again, when you're outputting data, you can specify the width of the field in which the data is printed. If the data is smaller than the size of the field, then you need to specify a fill character, which say, says how to fill in the extra space that's not actually filled in by the data that you're writing. Typically, this is a space character, but you can control and set it to other values. NDEL is a manipulator that simply uh, prints a new line and flushes the output stream. Uh, flush, as the name suggests, just flushes the output stream. Deck, hex, and awk control the number base in which certain numerical values are output. Uh, Deck sets decimal, hex chooses hexadecimal, and awk chooses octal for the number base. Uh, show pos and no show pos control whether or not positive signs are printed in front of numbers. Sometimes you might want to include the positive sign for a positive value, other times you might not, so you can control this. Uh, left and right control how the data is justified within the field that's being printed. Again, you can control the, the width of the field in which the data is printed, but sometimes the data will be smaller than the size of the, the field that you're printing into, in which case you might want to control whether the data is left justified or right justified within the field. And that's what these uh, manipulators allow you to control. Fixed and scientific control whether numbers are printed in, in, in uh, fixed point notation or scientific notation. And then set precision is used to control the precision of the numbers, which, uh, for example, for, for floating point numbers, controls how many digits come after the decimal point. On this slide, I have a code example to help illustrate how I.O. manipulators can be used to control the formatting of output. So in this code example, the first thing you'll notice is I include the header files I.O. stream and I.O. manip. I.O. manip is needed to pick up some of the declarations or definitions related to I.O. manipulators. Then in the function main, what I do is I define two double variables, one called pi and one called big, that have the values that are shown here. And all I'm going to do below is I'm going to print both of these numbers with various different combinations of I.O. manipulators to control how they're formatted when they're output. So I'm going to write to C out, in other words, the standard output stream, the value of pi and big, without any special manipulators. When I do this, what prints out is 3.14159. You'll notice that the number has been rounded to, to uh, basically five decimal places. And also the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is being printed out in scientific notation. So the default uh, formatting, will, depending on how large the number is, it might use scientific notation or it might print it out just in the, the normal kind of format that you might expect for a number. In the next example here, I use fixed point notation. So here I'm using an IO manipulator before I print pi and big. I'm first outputting the manipulator fixed, which says to print subsequent values in fixed point notation. So you notice now when I print pi, pi and big here, what prints out is 3.141593, so the output is a little bit different from before. You get one additional decimal place. 
And here, the fixed point notation, I get all of the integer part of the original number big plus a bunch of zeros following that. So this is fixed point. There's no scientific notation here, the notation that involves like this E, for example. And if we look at the next case here, I'm going to use an IO manipulator to enable scientific mode, scientific notation. And then I'm going to output pi and big again. And when I do this, what I end up with is, notice the scientific notation. I get 3.1451593 times 10 to the 0. And also this number prints out in scientific notation as well, 1.234568 times 10 to the 8. Then in the next example, I use fixed point notation and I specify the precision to control how many digits appear after the decimal point. I want to print seven digits after the decimal point. Uh, so I print, um, I output the manipulator for fixed point notation, then I output a manipulator for setting the precision to seven, and then I print pi in big. And you'll notice now when I print, print pi, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, digits after the decimal place. And he, uh, for this number, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros after the decimal place, seven digits after the decimal place. In the next example, I, I use fixed point notation with precision, and also I specify the field width as well. In other words, how wide is the field in which the number is going to be printed that I'm outputting? And then I output the value of pi and big. In the case of pi, I'm going to set the field width to eight characters. So the number, the value is going to be printed in a field of, of a field of width 8, and for big, before I print it, I set the field width to 20. And when I print these values, what I end up with is something that looks like this. 3.14 is printed in a, in a field width of, of 8 characters. And the reason why it only prints two decimal places here is I also set the precision to 2. So I'm only going to get two digits after the decimal place. Over here, you'll notice that the, the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this is printed in a field width of 20 characters. And both of these are right justified. They're printed right justified in the field that they're printed in. And then in the last example here, I use fixed point notation specifying the precision width and I specify a fill character as well. And you'll notice the only difference between um, the, the, this line of code here and the previous one in terms of the output. The output looks identical in these two cases, except in the places where previously I had spaces filling in the extra part of the fields that weren't used they're now filled in with X's because I've set the fill character up above to be X. So the extra characters that are used to pad out or fill in the remaining part of the fields that aren't used because the data that I'm actually printing is smaller than the field is padded with the character X.